Welcome everyone. This is the latest episode of uh, Waiting Room with Andy Varga. I'm the CEO and founder of Daikon Lab. We started this series uh, in order to chat and discuss uh, with some colleagues all across Europe on the current situation, how they solve it, how they see it as business professionals, how they see it as doctors and how they manage their life as individuals. Um, and I'm very happy to announce uh, my today's guest, Manuel Zaragoza from Spain, from Palma de Mallorca. Uh, hi, Manuel. Hello there. How are you doing? Um, Manuel graduated in, in, in Spain, in Valencia, and, uh, and then he moved to the UK. He was working there for five years a, as a general practitioner and as an uh, implant specialist as well. Uh, then he moved back to Palma de Mallorca, where he continued his trainings, he continued his professional work, and now he just recently opened his, uh, his uh, private practice, uh, so I'm quite sure that he will have some very interesting things to share with us, uh, how sees this situation. So, hi Manuel, thank you very much for inviting, for... Uh, uh, very uh, very thank you. So, um, how are you? What's up? Well, uh, very happy to see to be here. Actually, the, I think you had a very good idea with this kind of broadcasting things. People have many questions, and everyone has its you know own view about the situation. So, so far here we're doing quite all right. Um, we are, you know, family-wise speaking, everything is okay. So, dealing with this confination as good as we can. You know, reading a lot and. And watching quite a lot of Netflix, I'm not gonna lie, you know. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure when when people are are are, are hearing Mallorca or Spain, they are obviously thinking of, of you know holidays and a lot of tourists. I'm I'm pretty sure you have a special situation there in 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 Palma because uh, you're you're living in the in the middle of one of one of the the fanciest and the. Uh, and, and, and one of the, uh, the center of, of tourism in Europe. So, um, so I'm pretty sure you have a lot of changes now. So can you tell something about well, that? Well, you can imagine that life has changed for everyone because we have all of us, we have actually noticed it and we have, uh, we, we, could, we have experienced that. But yes, you're right. Um, being in Mallorca, one of the most touristic spots in Spain and you know, quite popular in Europe as well, we have, I mean, me personally, I have noticed, I have experienced something quite weird, which is the emptiness of the city. You know, it was always something going on. It was always people going around, people from everywhere, you know, just going around the streets, shopping and all that stuff. The beaches were actually full and, you know, the, the streets as well, a lot of nightlife, and that's all disappeared, you know. It is not like a small village or even a, a city where the, the locals actually don't, don't move around. It's uh, the, the lack of, of movement, the lack of life that we have at the moment. And that's fairly shocking, I have to be honest with you. And that's something quite worrying, as you can imagine, since our economy is hugely based on the tourism. And we will have to see how this will impact you know, the short term and even long term as well. So let's see what happens. But yes, life has changed quite radically here as well. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you just opened your office recently, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, as you said, I moved a bit around the world and luckily I have a chance to live in the UK and learn, study, work, and experience over there. But no offense to the English people, but you know, food was terrible, weather was boring, and I said, you know what, I'm going back to Spain, I'm going back to Mallorca. And then I did, in 2006, and I started working here, studying a bit more as well. And uh, at some point, I decided that I wanted to get my own path to start doing things that I felt and to start you know, working as perfection as I wanted to. So that eventually became in a you know in a new business, opening a new practice, and we have been up for the last few months. And it has been really, really good. It has been really, really good fun, good work, and things were going very well. And obviously now this means uh, you know uh, 
And we have been offering this kind of work to people, actually to the patient, because the um, emergency is fairly full, not that full here in Mallorca, luckily. Being an island has its advantages and controlling the people you know, coming in and out is quite easy, it's way easier than doing it in, for instance, Barcelona, Madrid or, or London. And we managed to work with you know, extra care, with extra protocols, and we wanted to discharge the uh, services from the hospitals because it was, um, you know, they had quite a lot of trouble with the work at the moment, and I felt that it was only fair to do so. To the other hand, uh, in the public uh, health system, we don't have you know, uh, dental emergencies as, you know, as, as a treatment. Uh, there are ones that are not as good as you can find in England or in other countries. So that uh, was actually our way to contribute and help a bit to the situation to the general uh, at the moment. Yeah. And what, um, were you mainly focusing on, on local patients or, or also, also touristic dentistry? What was, well, what was the new office? What was your main focus and what were your plans? You see, um, that has been quite uh, an interesting plan that we have been actually trying to, to grow. And we started mainly with locals after 10 years. I have quite you know, a nice agenda of patients which actually followed me, most of them, to my practice, which I'm very thankful, by the way. And um, in the other hand, having the chance of, you know, this tourism uh, incoming uh, all year, you know, because actually they come summer, winter, and they all year long, we decided to start exploring this way as well. And we just recently started with some corporations and, so, and, and some patients which actually were coming on purpose to have treatment performed here in Mallorca. And we were actually also uh, providing them with, uh, with accommodation and even food and everything in order to make sure that they could actually come and the families were actually having a vacation in, in Mallorca as, you know, as they were having, as these patients were actually having to in our practice. This just started, it was a quite interesting part of the business. And it, obviously actually that has radically stopped at the moment, but uh, to be honest with you, we nourish ourselves most from the local at the time being, and not so much about the, the tourism. Although, it's very important to say that in Mallorca, since this touristic industry is very important, it's, it's capital, I would say, this, is, this will affect directly or indirectly to everyone here, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's, that is the the short term on the long term. I was speaking before that we need to see how we got the short term. It's obvious that we won't be having hardly any tourism this year, and that's going to be hard for us. And um, long term, will it be, depends on a lot of things. Will it be a vaccine for that? Uh, will we find a treatment? Confinement measures will work or not? We'll see how it goes. Do you have do you have some action plans like how to reopen your uh, uh, your office or how to target your 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 patients or, or uh, possible future patients? Well, here we face I, to, to my understanding here we face two different way of seeing this the situation. You have the one uh, business uh, you know um, side of the story, and then you have the health side of the story as well. You see. Uh, Business-wise, it's obvious that we have to try to attract as much people as we can once we can open as normal as possible, you know. I was speaking the other day to a common friend of ours, uh, Raymond Higginan from Elise, I remember, sure, that's how we met. And I sent him a picture of myself dressed up with all the protections and he posted me back and told me that is going to be the new normal, you know. 
that is going to be the side that we have to try to give confidence to our patients. We actually um, did a great effort. We were doing uh, before a great effort in uh, hygiene and disinfectant standards. And we, actually, we haven't changed much about this you know, because we were already in a quite high standard and we were actually happy with it. And while we have changed the protocols at the time being, we just see one patient at a time, we isolate them from the rest of the practice. We have dirty areas, we have clean areas, and we make we, we make them just get out of the shoes and we cover ourselves very strictly. And this I understand it will be for a time, for a limited time until this, you know, this uh, uh, breakthrough, I mean, this breakout actually comes to an end and then things should relax a bit. But obviously, um, the way we're going to be interacting, the way, because of the proximity of our jobs, is going to change. Um, probably we'll need to get new shield systems or barriers or things like that. But that we need to make sure that the patients understand is that we do that for their own safety and for our safety as well. We have to be very careful, I believe, uh, in order to transmit confidence to them, because if we tell them that the dentist is a dangerous spot to go, obviously that's going to affect us business wise quickly. And that is something that we have to show. You know, using digital devices, minimizing the time of the equipment, and that's what you think, by the way, and uh, doing everything as quick as we can, you know, in the less appointments possible. Now I, it comes to my mind um, this absolutely amazing surgeries that we used to perform with bone uh, harvesting, with bone regeneration, with two, three, four gum regeneration as well, and three sets of categories, <laughs> and all that stuff that took us one year and a half, and we spent perhaps 50 hours of shedding uh, time, you know. Well, probably we will have to start doing something different. We will probably have to start cycling different things, at least in the, short, you know, the short term, in order to provide a good treatment, a predictable treatment with a minimum time and, you know, an invasion of a patient. And that's. That's going to be a new paradigm, at least for this time being. I don't know, in two years' time, three years' time, we'll see how it goes. But short term, I feel this is going to be very important. That's business by speaking. And health by speaking, I think that the colleague from Wednesday was speaking about it as well. He spoke about the handshaking, he spoke about the contact. Well, that depends a lot. You know? We will have to learn. New health measures will have to learn better, you know, self interaction without so much, you know, touching and all that stuff. In Holland, it will be easier. So, probably in the Netherlands, it's going to be easier. But certainly, that's going to be something hard to do. We are a very hugging and kissing society. That's going to be a change. So, that's just, I mean, yeah, at the very end, we will have to see how it goes, you know? Yeah. I'm not sure about anything that we, we, we say today. So in February, I was hearing on the TV that this is more like a flu. Well, it's quite obvious that it's not actually a flu. So we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I, know, I know for a reason that you're um, you're quite keen on, on on digital stuff. You're you're an Invisalign user for uh, for a number of years. Uh, you're also using uh, uh, our technology with Tycoma for guided surgeries. Um, what do you, how, how, how do you see it? What effect it will have or might have on on digital dentistry on spreading all of these uh, technologies? I was already, uh, before it happened, I was always chatting with colleagues and so on, and they were telling me, how, can, how are you investing so much in this kind of, of technology? And I always thought, uh, that wasn't actually my, my motto, I was thinking, um, 
digital workflow and the third industry, you know, digital world altogether, because that affects every single industry in the world. But in our, in our industry, uh, it's like a wave. And we are like simple. We have, to, we have three options. We can see the wave coming and start swimming to get it. We can wait for it to be a bit closer and then get a bit pushed about it, but anyway, start running when you see behind you, just behind you, or you can wait and just be pushed away by, by it. And that's going to happen. I mean, that is something that was going to happen before this, and yeah. now this is going to speed up. Yeah. My feeling is that um, digital dentistry provides you with accuracy, especially accuracy, and time. Time is free. We spend more time, and you do know that. We spend more time facing our computers and working, you know, online or to stay in our way without a patient or offline, you know, from the patient. What, why do we do that? Because when we do so, we can spend less time, much, much less time with the patient, and we can be more efficient, can be way more accurate. And we can be more predictable. So that will, you know, eventually come back as success for us and benefits for the patient. Uh, if we put this coronavirus crisis into the equation, well, that makes it even more important. If you can minimize contact, you can do simpler techniques, you can control more the timing, if you need to do less tests. Get less exposition, you get more efficient efficiency at the very end of the day, and you spend less time, so you make your practice more, uh, even economically more efficient. So at the very end, uh, this is going to be just you know this coronavirus thing is going to, to push this digital wave just a bit stronger and a bit you know uh, further away. I mean, uh, further you know further uh, further in actually, so to say. Because um, it was already coming, you know. Uh, we have a, a very important company in Spain, which is CIPA, which is periodontics, and I try to visit it every year. And last year already, 2019, 99% of the stands of the places were showing already and selling you the new digits of dentistry coming. Well, 2020 now, coronavirus is on our backs. This is going to happen, yes or yes, and now we don't have much of a choice. Yeah. So, yes, I mean, as I said before, either you serve the way and you just prepare yourself, all the way will just push you away. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm planning to make, uh, uh, or we're planning to make another series when we were focused on this topic, like, uh, 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 what is what is the new future of uh, of, of this field? So uh, um, I would be very happy to to continue this discussion. Very happy, very, very happy to give up yeah. And so, how about how about your 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 private life as an individual, hobbies, yeah. family? I mean, you have you have a, you're, you're living in a beautiful place. So uh, well, yes. I mean, I'm very lucky, very lucky guy. I have to be honest with you. I live in a lovely flat, which is a is a ground floor with a small garden, 50 square meters, so I'm privileged because I can go out. And in Mallorca, most of the time it's sunny, so I have a chance to get some air. I'm a really privileged guy. I'm really happy because of that. And um, being at home, besides the fact of not being able to work, which I, I really am, I, I love doing what I do. Uh, I really enjoy you know, developing the activities I do. And, all the new project that I was having, you know, in front of me, uh, that's really challenging and I enjoy that a lot. But besides that, which I hope they just in a standby mode now and they will just start again after this finishes. I like very much reading and I like very much sports and I do have a spinning cycle at home okay. and I do as well taekwondo. I like very much this kind of, you know, sports and I have a chance to train outside. So, to be honest with you, I'm training more than ever because I have more time than ever. And yeah, I'm doing this one, you're not the first one saying this. And I also yeah, feel yeah. I, try to, I try to do sports three times, four times a, a week, and now I'm about six, seven. You know, I'm just yeah. just like this, you know, just giving it everything. 
And to be honest, it, it helps me a lot to deal with the stress. And uh, it's a good time to to think a bit about uh, about what you're planning to do, to focus on what is going to happen when we come out. And why not to enjoy a bit of time with my wife? We just got married last year. So we have no kids at the moment. So to be honest as well, that's a very lucky thing because we can enjoy ourselves and we can actually indulge ourselves much more. And yes. It's like it's like yeah. a second honeymoon. Um, sorry, could you repeat please? It's it's like a second honeymoon for you guys. Oh yes. <laughs> to be honest with you, yes. And uh, we spend time exactly, we can spend time together, we can enjoy a lot together and you, you see, I mean we have been married for nine months. We still we still stand each other very well. You know, so yeah. everything is going fine. Yeah. And yes, well, doing sports, I'm not lying to you, I'm watching Netflix as well, a lot of Netflix, you know. And on the other hand, science by speaking, I have so many webinars, I have so many chats, I have heard so many, you know, speeches about so such a lot of interesting people, I do not have time to see them all, you know. So if you want, and that's, that's something fantastic that came up during this crisis, you know, how many, like you also know, how many good initiatives you find to enjoy, to learn. And, you know, I'm doing a Photoshop course that I actually was, you know, I had all this pending. I use more as a bit of Photoshop and now I'm learning properly, you know, to improve my pictures. I learned as well to improve my, you know, my, my usage of my camera. Um, I've been reading a lot about DSD. I've been seeing a lot about many other things, which, you know, because of your daily obligations, you don't have the time. So I am I am trying to make the most of it and using the time as much as I can, you know. And in the meantime, I go cycling a bit, you know, inside indoors and that's it. Great. Yeah, I also I also have a similar um, feeling about this. Like in the last two years, I'm, I was uh, I was flying on a weekly basis. Uh, and now, in the last one and a half, two months, it's it went down to zero, of course. But controversially, I never felt so international because yes. I'm, I'm chatting. I'm chatting like several times per day with uh, with colleagues and and friends from all around the world, and it uh, yeah, it's it's actually it's actually great and and crazy at the same time. Like we always had the chance. We always had our numbers and. Uh, and you know the telephones in our pocket, but we just never, never really used this possibility. But now somehow everybody's—I uh, wouldn't say forced, but in a situation where more likely uh, uh, to do these kind of activities. So yeah, it's interesting how it changed. And that's going to change probably uh, even elderly people's life because they are learning how to use this kind of technology. I mean, you and I and the younger people that come, you know, behind us. They they do learn they do know already how to do that they are absolutely on that. My father has learned things that I would never thought he would be able to do. My mother probably is working me now live. She may even just set up a, a Facebook account so she could watch me. You know, she has never touched, touched Facebook or anything like that. This is the positive thing we can you know take from this situation. People is learning many things and they are, as you said, communicate case much more. And you know it's that that is the, the bright side of this of this experience, you know. We are learning new things. And we are improving our things, so not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well let's uh, let's keep it that way. Let's let's make the best out of it. Let's let's learn and uh, let's learn learn about this situation. And um, and thank you very much, Manuel. And let's uh, absolute really, pleasure. Pleasure to speak to you, Andy. I really wish you and your family, your parents, uh, great health. Okay. My boys. My boys. for the upcoming uh, upcoming weeks or months. So uh, and we are of course staying in touch. Uh, so thank you, Manuel, once again. Thank you very thank much. For having me. It has been a great pleasure. Thank you. And for our viewers, thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay tuned. Next week, we are uh, continuing this, uh, uh, these episodes and this series. Uh, next week, we are, are also going to have some uh, brilliant minds and some interesting colleagues from all across Europe. So uh, we'll continue these interesting discussions. Thank you very much once again.
and have a nice weekend, everybody. See you.